Okay, we have one more part that is OQ. We call it operator qualification. So like the cover task for a park or in a pipeline installation, I'm coming on the cover task. What are the tasks involved in the cover task? They call it cover task. So this cover task should be performed by a person who are qualified. And uh, this support in of O92 explains what they mean by OQ. So this support prescribes minimum requirements to perform cover task. And the, the question is, what is cover task? The, is defined performed on a pipeline facility. Whatever work needs to be done, that's the cover task. Operations and maintenance task is performed as a requirement of this part 192. That's part, uh, so part N. And this works affects the operation and integrity of the pipeline. These are uh, the cover tasks. And sometimes you have hard AOC. Uh, in short, we call it abnormal operating condition. So any condition that seems to malfunction uh, of a component or uh, the deviation from normal operation, that's called abnormal operating condition. In short, we call it AOC. Uh, AOCs uh, indicate that there is seeing the design limit or results in a hazardous condition for person and property environment. So these are the definition of uh, cover task. So how do you evaluate this? It's a process established and documented by operator to determine an individual's ability to perform a cover task. So actually we go for his training, that's what he's trying to say, and how we can do that. It's a, there is a written examination that uh, makes sure that the person is knowledgeable about the pipeline, or it can have an oral examination also. Ask questions about pipeline, so you make sure that he's aware of the construction and pipeline systems. Uh, work performance history review, when he gives his uh, re, re, you know, qualifications, you can go through what did, did he do before. You can use that and review his perform, uh, previous uh, activity, what did he do on uh, pipeline safety. <clears throat> and observe during performance of the job, like, in place, you can have, tell him to do some activities in the pipeline. From that, you know that he's knowledgeable about uh, the pipeline, like patrolling or how do you do leak survey or what are the conditions. And uh, on the job training or simulations or any other forms of assessment. So this is the definition of qualified. When an individual has been evaluated and can but from the job, you organize and react. Somebody has, is seeing something, abnormal operating condition, so he knows what to do at this moment. And recognizes any reaction to abnormal operating condition, and uh, that is identified as a OQ qualified. If he can recognize and react, So each operator shall have this, shall have and follow each and qualification program. So the operator should have a program that to make somebody OK qualified. It's part of their program. That means when somebody comes uh, in your um, mobile home park, so your program is to that he must be qualified. So in your program, like you have planned to uh, perform that task like uh, leak survey or um, corrosion. So similarly, you, you'd have a program that in, in place to make people qualified to do the cover task. So 
So, and this provision should be this. The identified covertas ensure through evaluation that individual are qualified. Now, if person is not qualified, still he can work with your, in your park. But a qualified person should observe continuously during his performance. It's also allowed. Is it clear? You have a OQ qualified person, and you, you want your work to be done by somebody else who is not qualified. But during his uh, task, a qualified person must observe everything. Then it is allowed by law that he can do the job in supervision of his uh, superior or somebody else. Uh, cover task if directed and observed by any individual that is qualified. Allow individual that are not qualified, if directed and observed by individual, then it's also is qualified. <clears throat> Evaluate an individual of an individual's performance is believed to contribute an incident. Evaluate an individual when there are reasons to believe that the individual is no longer qualified. These are the part of your program. Communicate changes that affect cover tasks to individual and identify those cover tasks and interviews and whose evaluation of individuals qualified is needed. So if you think that the person is not qualified, so uh, you can evaluate his performance. So these are some regulations after December 16, training as appropriate, notify the administration or agency participate. These are some regulations that uh, you need know, notify. And uh, these are particularly some of the qualification goes to uh, steel pipeline and uh, plastic pipeline. So there are some regulations that qualification of welders so welders should be qualified according to section 6 and 12 of API 1104. Uh, this is not, you know, not must for the mobile home park, particularly most of them are plastic pipe. But if you have any uh, steel pipe and need to be the welders, uh, you can use a contractor. But if you are using a contractor, uh, you need to make sure that their personnel are qualified. So you need to evaluate the contractor's uh, OQ program. <clears throat> but this uh, 285 is to, to make a joint. This person must be qualified by appropriate training experience to make a joint. Uh, this is for welding, and uh, Appendix C is requirement for welding for qualifying test for the welding. A plastic pipe qualification. So all joints, plastic pipe joints, must be done by a qualified personnel <clears throat> with the appropriate training, and the samples should be inspected. As said in, like this one must be joined, visually examined, and look the appearances and who is actually acceptable under the procedure. And like heat fusion, sol uh, solvent cement, or adhesive joint, it tested under any of the test methods listed under 283A. And you can use ultrasonic inspection also to make sure that there is no failure. Number three, cut into at least three longitudinal strips visually examine, deformed by bending, torque or impact, and if failure occurs, it must not initiate in the joint area. That means the joint, joint is okay if you follow these tests. A person must be requalified every 15 months, maximum, if found acceptable by testing under uh, 513.
So each operator shall establish a method to determine each person making joints is qualified. Record should be kept. Its qualification record should be kept. Identification of individual, individual cover tasks that the individual performed. So this record should be maintained. Date of current qualification and the qualification methods that he has qualified for, and records should be kept for five years. These are some regulations that operator must uh, print qualification by FP27, uh, individual by October 28. So I think this is some regulations. After October 28, ORC performance history may not be used as a sole evaluation. So you need to add some more other than ORC performance review. On the job, performance may not be used. So these are some restrictions to these previous laws. If you have any concern or questions. Design limitation is uh, pipes have a uh, pressure that is uh, we design. The pipe is designed for a limit, like 50 PSI, 60 PSI, or something like that. So if it is exceeded, then uh, that's what it's talking about. Uh, it is a construction. If you go to the construction record, it has all the information. Con construction. During instant construction, the pi No, the records. The records. When the pipe was installed, I'm sure there is a record. Uh, as built pipeline, everything is there. The pipe was designed and how it was instruction. The whole uh, as built drawing is there. No, no, no. The uh, the operator has it. So, do we have the records? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, the, the code is uh, imposed after the installation. So, prior to 1970, it doesn't apply. If the pipeline is constructed before 70, we call it grandfathered. So, many things you don't have to comply with. Yeah. When you go and <laughs> what did you say, sorry? If the pipeline is constructed before seventy, we call it grandfathered and. <laughs> yeah, run. <laughs> uh, pre-1970, right? August? 
Yes, yes. We have when the initial minister before 1970, we say grandfathered, and they are not. They don't have some uh, relaxation like. what the maximum pressure of that pipe is. If it's plastic, um, is this on? I, I guess it is, okay. That's not very good. Um, design for steel is in 192.105, and for plastic it's 192.121. That's your design formula. So if you don't have prior pressures, you can utilize that design formula under 192.619 and determine what your maximum operating pressure is. So you can figure out if you uh, you go above and beyond, right? Well, if you're an out system, then um, the only thing you have to meet is what is it 621, Dave? I'm drawing a blank. Low pressure distribution system. That's the only requirement you have to meet. So, uh, a low pressure distribution system is um, whatever can be safely delivered to the customer. In, in your case, ounces. As long as you don't go under what the customers can take, which is typically uh, what four ounces or four inches of water column, and and above um, newer systems two pounds, uh, older systems about a pound and a half. So, as long as you stay within that limit, you're fine. And your MAOP would be whatever the maximum inlet of whatever appliances are attached to your system are, which is typically about a pound and a half. So. Yes. Yes, yes. A person who is making this joint, he needs to be qualified. That's what he's saying. Yes, yes, that's what he's saying. Yes. I think the agency who gives the certification, they, they will do it. Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Yeah. They give a certificate, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, grandfather is actually mainly applies to cathodic protection system. So the parks that were installed before 1970, they are not required to have any CP system installed. But if they upgrade their system, then they are supposed to uh, install this uh, CP program. But if they don't do any upgrading or repair or anything, 
uh, it's okay. They don't have to comply with the CP requirement. Any other question about regarding this? Uh, it's still fittings, yeah. Yeah, the, the regulation is if they don't upgrade, then they don't have to uh, install a CP system. Is that what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. pretty much uh, everybody. Yes. Okay.